about James Harrison. It's the story of the NFL. When you have the two best teams in the AFC, when you have a player of the caliber of James Harrison, uh, 39 years old, has not played that much for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year. He's one sack. I think he's played what just a handful of minutes or so. Mike Tomlin generally does, he's the Steelers coach, if you had no idea, but uh, I think you do. He does not like veterans. Now, let me just say this. I came to this conclusion way back in 2010, the time the Steelers had a pretty good team player by the name of Charlie Batch. And Charlie Batch was the Steelers' backup quarterback, had been for many years. And he was a very effective backup quarterback, but he was now on the other side of 35, I believe. And so Tomlin, despite the fact that Batch's play had not decreased, he had gotten hurt the year before, but started actively looking at ways to ease him out of his job. They signed another uh, quarterback. Was it Rob Gronkowski? I'm trying to remember. Or who did they sign? I'm trying to remember. They signed another backup quarterback, a veteran. They drafted a uh, quarterback out of Oregon named Dennis Dixon. And you know what? Charlie Batch kept playing well enough, and other players, there's Byron Leftwich, excuse me, I think, uh, kept getting hurt, that Charlie Batch kept getting kept around. He'd start as the fourth quarterback, and I remember in 2010, or, uh, yeah, it was 2010, he would wind up being the starter for a period of time. Remember, this was when uh, Ben Roethlisberger was going to be suspended. And here was a guy who wasn't even supposed to make the team, and he's leading them to a 3-1 and one record. Didn't matter. Every year, new quarterbacks were brought in, and Charlie Batch was continually earning his job until finally Tomlin just had, and it was nothing about his, pay, his play, removed him. Now, I understand that you don't want a team to grow old. I totally understand that. I have seen coaches and managers who let their teams grow old. Most managers, I've known a lot of managers that I've had a lot of respect for, Chuck Tanner, Charlie Manuel, both of them won World Series, but they also were maybe kind to a fault to the people and the players that had given them, uh, and, and by that them I mean the manager, championships, playoff appearances. Uh, they would bring back an old veteran who really was past their prime and try to get some more, you know, a, a place in the starting rotation for him, let's just say. And it rarely worked. You know, they, most of them were over the hill. I've seen that happen. And yet, yeah, that doesn't help out your team at all. But there is also, and remember, Bilson Maxim, number 16, take care of your legends. And that's what these guys are trying to do. Uh, the cold world of professional sports here today, gone tomorrow, does not breed well for a cohesive locker room. Uh, respect for a coach. It just doesn't. And I know that some team, you know, the Steelers have always been about youth. That's good. But they actually tried to get rid of James Harrison when he was 35, he played a year for the Bengals, and then he came back and has played the last four years with the Steelers. That should tell you something, that he still had football left in him. And the Steelers have revived under him. I mean, they're what? Number two seed right now in the AFC, just like they were. I guess last year they were number three seed in the AFC, but you know, played in the title game. It isn't just... Harrison is it isn't just Charlie Batch, but you go down a list. Steel Heinz Ward was another one who just one day, boom, you're gone. No. We're gonna do they did this crazy thing where they would try to play him in garbage time, Heinz Ward, so he'd get to a thousand catches. He caught his one thousandth pass, it actually lost three yards, and then they never played him again. The rest of the season the way out there. The team leader. Ward didn't return to coaching, so he said, oh, I'd love to coach Georgia. That's where he played college. So he went to sports casting. It's been a good one, calling Notre Dame games on NBC. I mean, you know, we've seen that. 
But again, it's a guy that, you know, you'd think, okay, after all he's done for the organization, maybe you let him dictate his own terms, assuming he won't cost too much on the cap. I've often wondered if this actually hurts uh, the Steelers, and this is the reason why they have their lack of discipline. Why, with the exception of last week against the Texans, it seems like the Steelers are always playing to the level of their opponent, having to come back from two touchdown deficits to win by a point over the Ravens at home, last second field goals against weak, weak, weak Colts and Packers teams. Heck, they played the Browns earlier this year, only beat them by three points. Lost to the Bears. Play to the level of the opponent. And that's a sign of a badly coached team. I do understand you don't want to get old. I also understand there's needs for veteran leadership. I also believe this is one of the reasons why Ben Roethlisberger may be thinking about retirement. He wants to choose his own terms instead of have Tomlin choose it for him. Heard a lot on Colin Coward saying, is this sort of like an old married couple? Uh, all sorts of reports that they have to go have a go-between now between quarterback and offensive coordinator. As good as the Steelers may have looked against the Texans, it's the 4-11 and Texans. Uh, you know, they're going to be the number two seed. They're going to have to go to New England. They've never beaten New England in the playoffs, not since 1997. That was pre-Belichick. And... You know, I, I, this James Harrison release and being picked up, you heard me discuss that that could happen here on this show on Christmas. I think it's a brilliant move. Harrison can still rush the passer. Not the player he once was, but he can still do that. On top of that, you are getting a player who you can pick his brain. Teams do this all the time, usually with linemen. Get divisional opponents, cut a lineman. Then they will bring him on to play for their team. Maybe he'll just be a backup. Do it all the time with quarterbacks. You'll see this happen a lot. Backup quarterbacks get uh, cut. Division rival picks it up. Third stringer never plays. What about that team? Tell us about that offense. It's done all the time. Although it did not appear that the Patriots need any help in, say, getting Rob Gronkowski open when they played the Steelers. Uh, having someone with that intricate knowledge of the defense, or perhaps even the offensive tendencies, I mean, he's a backup now as Harrison, he's practicing against the first team. Maybe that helps, too, with the New England Patriots. It is such a great Bill Belichick move. Uh, speaking of the Steelers, and I, I go back along, you know, I talked about this. 1979, I became a sports fan. I was eight years old. We moved to Pittsburgh, City of Champions, all that. So, you know, that's always been a part of me. But I can also remember uh, back in the day, and I and just to give you an example of how this can work, uh, and I mentioned a lot of times lineman, another pass rusher. Uh, I remember the Steelers had a bust lineman. His name was Daryl Sims, went to Wisconsin. Uh, they called him Sackman. I very rarely played in couple of years for the Steelers. Well, they cut him after a couple of years. I think he got picked up by the Brown strike team. Yeah, it's that year. Okay, 30 years ago. But he becomes, guess what? He becomes a starter on a team that plays for two AFC championships and makes another playoff team. I mean, he's starting on the defensive line. He was a former first-round pick. But also, the Browns loved it because they could pick their his brain, and he knew everything about the Steelers' tendencies. And guess what? They won and beat the Steelers. What was it? A grand total of, I'm going from memory now, but I know it to be correct, seven straight times culminating in a 51-0 victory in 1989. So this happens. You know, picking the brain, picking up that guy, tremendous move by the New England Patriots. I've been skeptical about the Steelers this year. Patriots, no Edelman. Obviously, if Gronkowski goes down, they're a different team. But is Gronkowski going to go down? Well, probably not. We saw what I'm referring to as the suspension that he had against Miami. 
I look at the, it could be the Patriots. This is why the Patriots have this dynasty. This is why it has gone on for 17 years. By the way, Harrison says he loves his new digs. Finally has a teammate older than him and Tom Brady who's 40. And quite productive. I wouldn't be surprised if Harrison also found productivity in the playoffs for New England. When we come back, I am going to tell you a little bit about, could there be another football league? We've talked about this. And, you know, I talk about this area becoming cosmopolitan. Well, let's just throw it out there. East Tennessee for the XFL. Hey, why not? You really think they're going to be going to the big, huge markets like they used to be? Try City Sports now. Crabtree Buick GMC. It means trust. For over 60 years, Crabtree has been selling quality vehicles in the Tri-Cities. It means service. With certified service technicians and a state-of-the-art facility, we can take care of any service need. It means value. With a large selection of stylish Buick models at great prices. It means precision. With the professional-grade engineering you'll find in every GMC vehicle. 